The crystal wine glasses clinked against bone china as our family gathered for our traditional Sunday dinner at the mansion. I adjusted my simple black dress, feeling out of place among my sister Catherine's designer outfit and mom's pearls. My laptop bag containing five years of quantum research sat heavy beside me. Victoria, Dad began swirling his Bordeaux. We need to discuss your research funding. I paused fork halfway to my mouth. The quantum stability algorithm I'd been developing had been my life's work since graduating MIT. What about it? The board feels it's time to cut our losses, he said, sliding a document across the mahogany table. We're selling the research division. Catherine smirked behind her wine glass. Finally, that basement lab was embarrassing for the family name. But we're close to a breakthrough, I protested my heart racing. The quantum stability tests are showing promising results dash. Promising isn't profitable, Dad cut in. Maxwell Industries needs certainty, not theories. I've already arranged the sale to Global Tech. Mom dabbed her lips with a napkin. Darling, it's time to do something practical. Catherine's division is bringing in real revenue. By copying other companies' innovations, I muttered. By making money, Catherine shot back. While you play with your equations in the dark. Dad pushed the papers closer. Sign the transfer documents. Global Tech is offering two million for the entire project. Two million. I almost laughed. Dad, the potential applications alone dash. Are worthless without proof, he interrupted. Sign. My phone buzzed in my bag. Then again. And again. Popular tonight? Catherine sneered. With trembling fingers I pulled out my phone. Three messages from the patent office marked, urgent, lit up my screen. I opened the first one, quantum stability algorithm patent number 457892 approved. The second, breakthrough designation granted. The third made my heart stop, initial bidding offers starting at $3.7 billion. Please advise. I looked up at Dad who was already signing the transfer papers with his Mont Blanc pen. About that signature. It's done, he declared, finishing with a flourish. Time to join the real world, Victoria. Interesting timing, I said calmly, turning my phone to face them. The patent office seems to disagree about worthless theories. The pen clattered from Dad's hand, leaving an ink stain on his pristine white tablecloth. Catherine's wine glass froze halfway to her lips. Mom's fork hit her plate with a sharp clang. 3.7. Catherine choked. Billion, I finished. Not million. Billion. I stood gathering my laptop bag. And that's just the starting bid. Dad lunged for the papers he'd just signed but I was faster. These, I held up the transfer documents, are worthless. The patents in my name not Maxwell Industries. I registered it privately last week. You can't do that, Dad sputtered. The company funded Dash. My personal trust fund funded it. I corrected. The one grandma left me. I never took a penny of company money. I smiled, remembering grandma's last words. Don't let them cage your brilliance, dear. My phone buzzed again. Excuse me, I said reading the new message. That's Google raising the bid to four billion. Shall we discuss who's joining the real world now? The dining room fell silent except for the soft clink of Catherine's shaking wine glass against her teeth. I pulled out my tablet displaying the quantum stability simulation that had consumed my life for five years. Let me show you what you were about to sell for pocket change. The holographic display lit up the dining room, showing quantum particles dancing in perfect synchronization. Dad's face paled as he recognized the implications. Quantum computing without decoherence, I explained rotating the display. Perfect stability at room temperature. Every major tech company has been trying to solve this for decades. But, your reports showed inconsistent results, Catherine stammered. I laughed softly. Those reports? Carefully crafted decoys. I learned from watching you, Cat, how you steal innovations from other divisions. Did you really think I'd leave my real research vulnerable? Mom's hands trembled as she reached for the crystal decanter. Victoria, surely we can discuss this as a family dash. Like you discussed selling my life's work? I swiped through more patent documents on my tablet. Oh, and it's not just one patent. I filed 12. The quantum stability algorithm is just the foundation. 
Dad's face had turned an interesting shade of gray. 12. Quantum computing, quantum encryption, quantum storage. I listed each word making him flinch. Conservative estimates value the complete patent portfolio at 15 billion. But that's probably low considering the military applications. Another message lit up my phone. Speaking of military applications, I smiled. That's the Department of Defense requesting an urgent meeting. Catherine knocked over her wine glass, red liquid seeping into the white tablecloth. You played us. No, sister dear. I protected myself. I stood smoothing my dress. From the family that was supposed to protect me. Dad reached for the transfer papers again. As CEO of Maxwell Industries Dash. You might want to hold that thought, I interrupted, pulling out one final document. Remember when you made me sign those board appointment papers last month? The ones you didn't bother to read carefully? His hands froze. Turn to page 47, paragraph 3, I suggested, where it details the automatic transfer of voting shares in the event of attempted intellectual property appropriation. Mom gasped as Dad frantically flipped through the pages. As of. I checked my watch. Twelve minutes ago when you tried to force the sale of my research I became majority shareholder of Maxwell Industries. The sound of multiple phones buzzing filled the stunned silence. The news was breaking. Now then, I placed my napkin on the table. I believe my first act as controlling shareholder should be calling an emergency board meeting. Dad, you'll want to prepare your retirement speech. I gathered my things, pausing at the dining room door. When Catherine, clean out your office. Your history of corporate espionage is our first agenda item. The setting sun cast long shadows through the windows, highlighting the chaos I'd left on the dinner table. Spilled wine, scattered papers and shattered illusions. My phone buzzed again with another bid. But I was no longer interested in selling. I had bigger plans for my quantum revolution. And this was just the beginning. The Maxwell Industries boardroom hummed with tension the next morning. Fourteen board members sat rigid in their leather chairs, stealing glances between me and my father, who gripped his seat at the head of the table. This emergency meeting will come to order, the corporate secretary announced, his voice shaking slightly. On the screens behind him, the company's stock had already jumped 47% on news of the quantum patent breakthrough. Before we begin, Dad started trying to maintain his authoritative tone, I want to address these ridiculous claims dash. Let's start with facts, I interrupted taking out my tablet. Mr. Roberts, please distribute the documents. My lawyer stepped forward handing out thick folders. As you can see Ms. Maxwell's quantum technology patents are independently held. Furthermore, her acquisition of controlling shares is legally binding under Article 7 of the company charter. Impossible, Catherine burst out from her seat near Dad. She's never even attended a board meeting. I smiled, pulling up the security footage from my lab. Actually, I've attended every meeting for the past year. You just didn't see me. The screens showed various maintenance staff and junior assistants in the background of board meetings. In each clip they wore different faces, different uniforms, all me gathering intelligence. Facial modification technology, I explained touching my now natural face. Another patent in my portfolio. Amazing how invisible you become when people think you're just serving coffee. Dad's knuckles whitened on the armrests. The board won't stand for this manipulation dash. The board, I cut in, might be more interested in this. I clicked to the next screen showing detailed records of Catherine's corporate espionage. Five years of stolen innovations buried researchers and destroyed careers. All to maintain the illusion of your precious innovation division. Catherine's face drained of color as her crimes filled the screens. Ms. Maxwell, Mr. Chin from the audit committee spoke up. What exactly are you proposing? I stood walking to the window overlooking the city. Maxwell Industries was founded on real innovation by my grandfather. Not theft, not intimidation, but genuine breakthroughs. I turned back to the board. I'm proposing we return to those principles. My phone buzzed again. The bidding for the patents had reached six billion. I ignored it. Effective immediately, I'm restructuring the company. The researchers you buried. I pressed a button and the door opened. A group of familiar faces entered. Scientists and engineers Catherine had pushed out over the years. They're your new department heads. This is absurd, Dad sputtered. 
You can't just dash. Actually, I can. And I have one more surprise. I nodded to Mr. Roberts, who distributed another set of documents. The quantum technology? It's just the beginning. Meet Project Phoenix. The screens filled with designs and simulations that made the board members gasp. Even Catherine leaned forward, her anger momentarily forgotten. What, what is this? Someone whispered. The future, I replied simply. And it's already built. The boardroom screens displayed a massive underground facility beneath my small basement lab. A quantum computing center larger than three football fields. While you thought I was playing with equations, I explained, zooming in on different sections, I built the world's most advanced quantum research facility. Funded entirely by my trust fund and private investors who actually understand innovation. Impossible, Catherine breathed. The construction alone would have been noticed dash. By your corporate spies? I smiled. They were too busy stealing outdated tech to notice the real work happening right under their feet. Literally. I pulled up the facility's test results. Three weeks ago we achieved quantum supremacy. Last week we solved protein folding problems that would take traditional supercomputers centuries. Yesterday we cracked atmospheric carbon capture. The board members' phones started buzzing simultaneously as the markets reacted to each revelation. Maxwell Industries' stock was soaring. But that's not all, I continued, clicking to the next screen. Dr. Rivera, would you like to explain your department's breakthrough? A woman Catherine had fired two years ago stepped forward. Using Ms. Maxwell's quantum stability algorithm, we've developed a room-temperature quantum computer the size of a laptop. The prototype is ready for demonstration. Dad finally found his voice. You can't just. These people were terminated dash. Illegally terminated, I corrected. After they refused to let Catherine steal their research. Speaking of which. I nodded to security. Please escort my sister to her office to collect her things. The FBI's corporate fraud division would like to ask her some questions. As Catherine was led out, screaming about family loyalty, I turned back to the board. Now let's discuss the real future of Maxwell Industries. Dad, you might want to take notes. It'll be your last board meeting. Mr. Chin raised his hand. The shareholders dash. Are ecstatic, I finished, displaying the stock ticker. We're up 89% and climbing. Because for the first time in years, Maxwell Industries is actually innovating. I moved to the head of the table, standing where my father had lorded over the company for two decades. Project Phoenix isn't just about quantum computing. It's about transforming this company back into what my grandfather built. A true technology leader. Dad stood shakily. You planned this. All of it. The patents, the shares, the facility. Five years, I nodded. Ever since you laughed at my initial quantum proposal and gave the funding to Catherine's department instead. That day, I learned that sometimes the best way to protect innovation is to hide it from those who would steal it. My phone buzzed again. The bidding had reached eight billion. I clicked ignore. But now. I smiled at the anxious board members. Now we do things in the light. Starting with a complete reorganization of the executive team. Dr. Rivera, you're our new head of innovation. Mr. Chin, I'd like you to lead the audit of Catherine's division. And Dad. He looked up, face ashen. The retirement package details are in your folder. I suggest taking it before the SEC investigation begins. The morning sun streamed through the boardroom windows, highlighting the quantum future displayed on the screens. I had transformed from the invisible daughter to the most powerful person in the room. And I was just getting started. One month after the takeover, Maxwell Industries' headquarters hummed with a different energy. The oppressive executive floor had been transformed into an innovation hub, with glass walls replacing closed doors and researchers freely sharing ideas. I stood in my grandfather's restored office, now mine, watching the sunrise over the city. The quantum facility's latest results scrolled across my tablet. Cancer protein mappings solved in hours instead of years, climate models that could predict changes down to the neighborhood level, and quantum encryption that made current security look like child's play. Miss Maxwell. My assistant entered. Your mother's here. And, the federal investigators need you to review Catherine's case files. I turned from the window, straightening my blazer. How's mom looking? Different. No pearls today. I nodded. Send her in. 
Mom entered hesitantly and I almost didn't recognize her. Gone were the designer suits and superior air. She wore simple business attire and carried a folder. The house is sold, she said quietly. Your father's retirement papers are signed. And Catherine, cooperating with the investigation. Mom sank into a chair. The evidence, it was worse than we thought. She didn't just steal innovations. She destroyed careers. Lives. I know, I replied, pulling up files on the wall screen. That's why I tracked every researcher she ruined. Many are back now, leading their own divisions. You gave them their lives back. I gave them what they earned. I turned to face her fully. Something this family forgot how to do. Mom opened her folder with trembling hands. I found these in your father's study. Your childhood drawings. Quantum equations even then. You were trying to show us for years. And you saw what you wanted to see, I said not unkindly. The quiet daughter. The basement scientist. The family disappointment. We were the disappointment, she whispered. Your grandfather. He would have been so proud. I walked to the wall where I'd hung my grandfather's original patents alongside my own. He knew. Before he died he left me a letter with my trust fund. Watch out for the quiet ones, he wrote. They're usually building revolutions. My phone buzzed, another breakthrough from the quantum lab. Cancer trials showing 98% success rates. The board meeting starts in 10 minutes, I said, gathering my files. We're announcing the new medical division today. Would you like to stay? Mom looked surprised. I'm not. I don't have a position anymore. Actually, I pulled out a document. I have a proposal. Grandfather's charitable foundation needs restructuring. It should be funding young scientists, not country club memberships. Interested. Her eyes filled with tears. After everything we did. The past is past, I said firmly. The question is, what will you build now? The boardroom doors opened and Dr. Rivera entered with the medical team. Their faces shone with excitement. Another quantum breakthrough ready to change the world. Time to start the meeting, I told mom. Are you joining us? She stood, squaring her shoulders. Yes. It's time I learned what real innovation looks like. As we walked to the boardroom my phone buzzed again. The stock had hit another record high. Catherine had pleaded guilty to all charges and Dad's retirement was official. But those weren't the messages that mattered. The one that counted was from the quantum lab. Clinical trials approved. First patients ready. We're going to save lives. I smiled, thinking of my grandfather's words. The quiet ones build revolutions. And my revolution was just beginning.